we are getting ready for Passover, for Pesach. And um, this is actually the first of the cycle of the holidays that begins. We were told when we were in Egypt to start to count the months. And so Nisan is the first of the month. So this is the first of the Jewish calendar cycle of holidays that is miraculous. It's not the same as Tishrei, which is the way that we count the year according to nature, but we actually start that the first holiday is Pesach, Passover. And the reason for that is that the Jews were in Egypt, enslaved, and God was taking the Jewish people out for the purpose of bringing them to Sinai. We'll talk about this some more. And so Passover is when we become free. That's when we became free on the night of the Paschal Lamb, the sacrificing of the Paschal Lamb, which was ate, was eaten with matzah that was not um that had not risen so let's talk about matzah today <clears throat> when we make the seder table what seems to be the center is three matzahs matzot one on top of the other and covered there's more about this but let's talk about what is matzah and this is the unleavened bread which is the most prominent item at the Passover Seder. It's called the bread of poverty that symbolizes the hardship that the Jews went through under Egyptian slavery. And then God took the Israelites out of slavery and they left in such a hurry that the bread that they baked as provisions for the way did not have time to rise. Now, to commemorate the unleavened bread that the Israelites ate when they left Egypt, we don't eat or even retain in our possession any chametz from midday of the day before Passover until the conclusion of the holiday. So let's talk just for a moment about chametz. What is chametz? Chametz means leavened grain, grain that is rising. So any food or drink that contains even a trace of wheat, barley, rye, oats, spelt, or the der derivatives, and which wasn't guarded from leavening or fermentation. That means if it wasn't made especially for Pesach, in which case it was guarded not to grow and leaven. So everything else, including bread, cake, cookies, cereal, pasta, and most alcoholic beverages, we are not allowed to eat from the pretty much the middle of the day or even the morning of the day before the Seder until all the way through Passover, which in Israel is seven days and in Hutzla Aras outside of the land, it is eight days. And we either, there are things we might throw away or there's a way to sell it. And all that information you can find in a number of places. You can ask your local rabbi. We could look it up on Chabad.org and find out what to do with the chametz. But we clean the house of chametz, which are these grains that have risen, and we're careful not to eat any chametz during the seven days or the eight days in the rest of the world. Now, chametz symbolizes ego. It's our puffed up, prideful sense of self. Whereas matzah is egoless. It's interesting, in the commentary on my Haggadah, it says that it says our sages taught that chametz, leavened leaven, is symbolic of evil in general because it has to do with puffed up ego and the evil inclination in particular. And this is a, a, a line from, uh, from the Talmud, from Brachot, and it says, we want to do your will, but the yeast in the dough is holding us back. So that's what we're saying to God. We want to do your will, but the, 
but the yeast in the dough is holding us back. So what that means is that our egos, some might say the Yetzirah, is, you know, we want, it, we want to do something. And then we said, no, God doesn't really want me to do that. And so I'm not going to do it. But that puffed up arrogance, is, oh, come on, there's no reason not to do it. And that puffed up arrogance is the chametz that sometimes brings the evil inclination to do something they should not be doing. So when we are searching for chametz, which means that we are before Pesach, we're making sure we don't have any of those foods around. Even if we sell them, we put them in a cabinet and we don't touch them. They're sold. They're not ours. Like I said, look it up in Chabad.org or there are other places to find this out. But that has to be done in a certain way. We're just taking that puffed up ego, getting rid of it, and we're starting with matzo, which is egoless. And matzo is also called hasty bread. In other words, it didn't have time to rise. And it reminds us of the nature of our redemption. God's told the people, okay, you're going to offer the Paschal lamb, put the blood around the lintels, and then get ready to go. And it even says that the people were told to have their belts, belts around their waist, their staff by their side. In other words, their shoes on. It's like, get ready to go. Shoo! Stand up. Get ready to go. And so this was something that was that God took us out quickly. And this redemption, which we're reminded of this happening at the Pesach Seder, it was sudden, drastic, and overwhelming change that the Almighty made in our lives. So at the stroke of midnight on Pesach Eve, God instantaneously transformed a materially and morally impoverished clan of slaves into a free people. These are the miracles, the wonders. God just said, that's it, you're out, out of slavery, and became a free people. And into this nation that he had chosen to be his light unto the nations and to play a central role, the central role in his purpose of bringing the awareness of God into creation. So the people were enslaved. They were enslaved for a long, long time. And now suddenly they were going into a different position in life. How could they do this? This is a huge shift. And we are telling the story here. That's the Haggadah and the Seder. And there is an organization where everything means something. And here, the, we're telling the story of how we went, the history of our lives from Avraham and who he was all the way through, but also how we came out of Egypt. So virtually the entire Seder centers on the three matzahs on the Seder plate. So from the recitation of the Haggadah, over the smaller half of the mi middle matzah. In other words, there's, there is instruction on what to do with the matzah. So first, we're saying the Haggadah over the smaller half of the middle matzah. And then at the end of the Seder, we're eating the after matzah, the afikolmen at the meal's end. So really, we begin eating, almost begin the eating, well, the meal is certainly, we're telling the story and then we go into eating the matzah and all the way through the whole Haggadah to the very end where we eat the Afakoman. So we'll speak about this as well. So the biblical name for a Passover is the festival of matzahs, Chag HaMatzot, for it is the matzah that embodies the essence of of the Exodus. So you have to understand why would this matzah embody the essence of the Exodus? Now, one of the questions that we would, so that's number one, why would it, why would the matzah be the essence of the Exodus? We're going to come to that. 
But another question is that we talk about the number four. Four is a recurring theme at the Seder. We drink four cups of wine. We ask four questions. We speak of the four sons. And there are a number of fours that have to do with this festival of freedom. So why aren't there four matzahs? Why are there only three? So our sages explain this, this recurrence of the theme of four on Pesach as deriving from the four expressions of redemption in God's promise to Moses. So Moses was told earlier, before the redemption, way before, God says, I will bring you out from under the hardship of Egypt. I will save you from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you to myself as a nation and I will be to you as a God. So the commentaries explain that these four expressions of redemption relate to the four aspects of our liberation from Egypt. I will bring you out is our physical removal from the geographical boundaries of Egypt. God's taking us physically out of Egypt. The second one I will save is taking us out of the Egyptian hegemony, the slavery, that Egypt was a superpower that enslaved and oppressed many nations and peoples outside of its borders also, taking us out of that whole power trip. I will redeem is the elimination of any future threat of enslavement by the great judgments inflicted upon the Egyptians. In other words, the seventh day of Pesach is when we celebrate the crossing of the Red Sea. And then the Egyptians chased the Jewish people again, the Israelites, and God said, I'm not going to allow that, and judged them, and they were gone. <clears throat> and I will take you to myself as a nation, and I will be to you as a God. So that has to do with our elections as God's chosen people at Mount Sinai, the purpose of the Exodus. So these are the four, one of them taking you out physically, the second one taking you out of their whole power trip, which was very multidimensional, the next one was getting rid of the Egyptians so that they couldn't do this again. And the fourth one was bringing you to Mount Sinai, where you would get your purpose and learn what to do in order to live with your purpose. But why aren't the four expressions of redemption represented in the most basic symbol of the Exodus, the matzah? Why are there only three matzahs arranged on the Seder plate? And the practical reason for the three matzahs is that bread of poverty is best represented by a piece of matzah rather than a whole matzah. That's interesting because early in the Seder, we break the matzah in half. That's very interesting. Still not three whole matzahs. We place three matzahs on the Seder, Seder plate. So at the beginning of the Seder, we break the middle matzah in two. The larger half is set aside for the afikomen. It's taken and we put, wrap it in a napkin or in a bag and put it aside. And that's going to be eaten at the end of the Seder. And the smaller half is called the bread of poverty. And that is the one on which we tell the story of the Haggadah. There are times when you lift up the cover and you lift the matzah. So this broken half is representing the bread of poverty. Now to observe the mitzvah of eating matzah 
we eat both from the broken matzah as well as from the top whole matzah. The third matzah is used for korach, the matzah and moror sandwich. So this is this is what we do. So we're going to use all of the matzahs. The matzahs are all part of the story, part of the eating. And matzah, and this is where we're going, matzah is more than a food. It's the way that we relive the exodus. It's also the only mitzvah we have today that we actually eat and digest, and it's a commandment to eat matzah. Okay, if somebody is completely unable to eat wheat, or there are options. You can talk to your rabbi. People can eat oat matzah if they're gluten-free. So there are choices. So it's the only mitzvah that we have today that we eat and digest. We're taking a mitzvah, a commandment from God that keeps us connected to God, and we take it into ourselves. We eat it, and we digest it. So according to Kabbalah, matzah, the matzah we eat on the first night of Pesach, strengthens the faith of the soul. And matzah eaten on the second night heals it. So for the people who are living in Israel, it's both. There's faith, it's the bread of faith, and it's also healing. But for us who are not in the land of Israel at this time, then the matzah is the first night is the bread of heal of faith, and on the second night is the bread of healing. So the matzah expresses both our poverty at the time of the Exodus and the haste with which the redemption came about. So it's the poverty, but the poverty is physical and spiritual because the people had been slaves for so long and it had truly affected them. And also the haste with which the redemption came about. So the two are interrelated. It was because we were impoverished spiritually as well as materially that our redemption had to be so hurried. Our sages explained that we had become so entrenched in the paganism and depravity of Egypt that the exodus came at the very last possible moment because people couldn't handle it anymore. If we had remained slaves in Egypt a moment longer, there would have been no people of Israel to redeem. But God didn't allow that. So we say in the Haggadah, if God had not taken our forefathers out of Egypt, we, our children and our children's children, would still be enslaved to Pharaoh in Egypt. If the redemption had not come when it did, it would not have come at all. Obviously, on the physical level, how could the whole nation, the people of Israel, be able to go into the desert and escape from Egypt? On the physical level, that couldn't have happened. And on the spiritual level, people were so affected by the society that was doing everything it could to destroy them, that God did miracles. And we know about the 10 plagues, and that's discussed also in the Haggadah. And God said, enough of that, and God took us out. But it had to happen quickly. But the people did not have time to get rid of the slave mentality and pagan ways. That was something they were accustomed to. And they didn't know how to really understand the significance of the role for which they were being chosen or to develop the proper emotional response to this unprecedented event in human history. So I just want to say that when we are on the night of Pesach, and this is true for the holidays. 
our holidays are not merely commemorative. It's not like the 4th of July. That was a good thing that happened then. That really was. But it's not like that. It's not saying that was an important date in history. For us, our calendar is like a spiral. And when we come to the night of Pesach, it's like we're right there in that line, spiritually and physically. And in that point, God is freeing us. God is freeing us of exile. That's why we get rid of our chametz first. So this is not an ego story, but we go in to this Yom Tov without ego. And so what happened? God said, okay, sacrifice the, la the lamb, time to get up, time to get out. Now you're going. And the Jews, all that we had was our faith in God, a faith that her had persevered throughout the long and terrible exile. So when they, when they were going out, what happened was that on Passover evening, on that night, um, what happened on that night was that God ignited this faith, faith in the Jew, that the Jewish people had with a tremendous revelation of his might and truth, blasting our souls free of the chains that had imprisoned them in an internal slavery that was even more dangerous than the physical bondage. So it was this faith alone that took us out of Egypt and set us on the road to Sinai. This faith is where we're connected essentially into the one God. So the prophet Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah, describes the moment when he, when he says, he's, this is the quote, so says God, I remember God speaking to the Jewish people. I remember your youthful love, your bridal devotion, following me out into the desert to an unknown, an unsown land. God said, let's go. And the people went. The people went. But faith was alone was not enough. And we are the descendants of those people who left Egypt with their faith intact. So faith is a transcendent force. And there is both its power and its limitations. It can lift a person to new heights, but these remain otherworldly experiences that are outside of the inner self. So we have this all the time, and we're supposed to bring this faith in to our lives. So faith got us out of Egypt, but it could not get the Egypt out of us. So to become truly and inherently free, we had to change from within by means of a gradual process of internal growth and development. So following the instant exodus of Passover, God started us on a systematic regimen of self-refinement and transformation. And only at the end of a 49-step process, which we re-experience every year with the 49-day Omer count, did he enter into his covenant with us at Mount Sinai. So God took us out of Egypt, but we had to get the Egypt out of us. And so for this, starting from the day after Pesach, so we start to count the Omer on the night after the first Seder, which means on the night of the second Seder. And then we start to count at night that we're counting day one. Today is day one. We count every night at night. I believe that I have a, 
classes on Omer, which we'll put out. So at the end of that 49-step process, then we came to Sinai, and God entered a covenant with us. So while we said, I will bring where God had promised to Moshe, I will bring out, I will save, and I will redeem, those elements of the Exodus were realized on Passover. But the fourth element, remember why there are three matzahs and four glasses of wine and four, 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 but only three matzahs, because the fourth element came to fruition seven days, seven weeks later with the given with the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. And that's marked each year with the festival of Shavuot. So this is interesting that really Pesach is the beginning of the redemption because God says, I will take you out and bring you to Sinai to give you the Torah. Of course, that was the reason that God took us out. So that begins with Pesach and ends with Shavuos. And there are two holidays that are like bookends. So at Sinai, God's promise, I will take you to myself as a nation, was realized. That's when we had internalized the faith of the Exodus, getting an understanding and appreciation of our mitzvah and our mission as God's treasured people among the nations, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So this is what God gave us, appointed to us, on, on Shavuot, at the, which is marked on Shavuot when we were in Sinai. I also want to mention that it's like on Pesach, when we take in that matzah, the bread of faith, and faith is, Kabbalistically, can be spoken of as being above the head, higher than our usual consciousness. And we're taking that matzah and we're taking that faith and we're bringing it in and we're eating the matzah and we're bringing that faith in. And then it takes 49 days to digest and integrate that matzah so that that freedom is not just on the outside, but that that freedom and that faith becomes who we are. So these two stages in our redemption are personified by two staples of the Seder, matzah and wine. So the Kabbalists say matzah is the bread of poverty and the bread of haste. It's also the bread of faith that represents the state of the Jewish people at the moment of the Exodus. The Passover matzah dough has to be kneaded hastily and placed immediately in the oven and taken out quickly enough so that it can't rise. That's the preparation of making matzahs. Also, in order to be valid for use at the Seder, the matzah has to consist of flour and water only. <clears throat> we don't put other components into it, egg or other things that some people eat, egg matzah, but not on Pesach. For the Seder, it has to be flour and water matzah. So matzah reflects the intellectual and emotional poverty of a person who is awakened by a flash of divine truth, follows God into the desert with nothing but his faith and commitment. That person is going with simplicity, tasting nothing but his own awe, the awe that he feels before the majesty of his creator and a firm resolve to serve him. So this is what happens with the matzah. We, we eat it, we follow God, and we dedicate ourselves to serve God. The wine that we drink is something completely different. That is the epitome of sense and experience. So wine, which it says gladdens God and man, 
represents the spiritual richness of the people who stood at the foot of Mount Sinai. Because by then the people had undergone the process of internalizing the divine truth so that it integrated and invigorated every corner of their minds and hearts. So first we're clearing the house of Hametz, which is clearing our minds and hearts of ego. We're going into the Seder clean with just our faith. We take in the bread of poverty and we eat the matzah, taking that faith in. And that's it. And then God puts us through the process of counting the Omer, of counting the 49 days of purifying ourselves, each one on deep, different levels, week after week after week, day after day after day. And this brings us to like a sweetness like that of wine, because we, we are learning and we're developing ourselves. And at that time, after Pesach, we can use the ego in a different way because we're connecting to faith and connecting to God. And that's why we have three matzahs and four cups of wine. So with the three matzahs, we are re-experiencing the event of the Exodus itself. The flash of faith that brought out, saved, and redeemed us from Egypt, but which did not reach the fourth expression of redemption that enables us to taste the substance of our freedom. With the four cups of wine, we savor also the fourth dimension of the Exodus. And that's the flavor and fragrance of the spiritual maturity attained at Sinai. So that's why the wine is a hint of that. It's the beginning of that in Pesach, but the matzah is just the faith at this point. Now, matzah does have a taste. It's interesting that some people say it doesn't taste like anything, but there is a taste. And it says that this taste of faith, the taste of, what is this taste? Remember, this is a spiritual matzah. This is a holy matzah. The taste of faith, the taste of commitment, the taste of egolessness. And matzah is not wine. It doesn't have the taste of intellectual questioning or the feelings of emotional passion. That's what wine does. But that's also when we've taken in that faith and we're living with what we are connecting to God with during Pesach, then after that, we begin to question what is Torah, what is Torah telling me? And we have the four sons in the Haggadah where, and they're Manishtana, what's going on over here? And each one has a different nature because it's good to learn Torah and to make our, our own natures refined. And that's what we're doing through the process of the counting of the Omer, which already begins the night after the first Seder. But the sensitive servants of God, somebody who's truly dedicated to God, will savor the simple and subtle flavor of matzah, a subtle, satisfying consistency. So we're going to speak more about faith, but I have to say that when it comes to this part of the Seder, to eat the matzah, this is so holy. This is We're connecting to God through the eating of the matzah. What I recommend is just eat that matzah quietly, just Take it in. Take that matzah in. It's the bread of faith. Second night is the bread of healing. Take it in. It's not a time to chat. 
It's a time to take the holiness into ourselves. So faith, true faith, always carries the potential for a deep and satisfying relationship with God. In other words, this faith needs to be taken in from above and brought into who we are. And this is allowing us to have this deep relationship with God that's, you can't describe it. So it's the matzah, not the wine, that is the symbol of the Exodus. We should strive to stimulate our senses with an appreciation of our purpose in life and our relationship with our creator. But the purpose of it all, of this Seder, of the eating of the matzah now, is to return to the early days of our journey. It's a return to the unequivocal, unequivocal commitment that is beyond reason and experience. We need to have reason and we need to learn. We learn Torah with its laws in preparation for Pesach. But this, this is a, this what we're going through on the night of the Seder, Seder is a reaffirmation of faith and commitment that comes after we have understood all that is in our power to understand and we've experienced all that we are capable of experiencing. So first we learn, we come to the Seder with a Haggadah, can choose your Haggadah, take out my Haggadah and take it with us. Some people take with them some notes that speaks to them that they want to look at at different times of the Pesach Seder. But what we're coming to is this purity of connecting to faith and connecting to commitment and connecting to the deepest place that we come to. And it's see, it's not even the deepest place we can because what's happening here is we're living a miracle. And when we eat this, the, the matzah, God is commanding us to eat this matzah. We don't have that about other foods these days. During the temple, there were things that needed to be eaten, but now, no, just the matzah. So it's, it's the acknowledgement that no matter how high our sensory self might reach, there's always something higher, a truth to which we can relate only with the simple acceptance of faith. So emuna, faith, is when you touch that place where your soul and the essence of the infinite light are one. It's a point that nothing can describe, where there are no words, no doubts, no uncertainty, no confusion, nothing else but a magnificent oneness before which all the challenges of life vanish. That is eating the bread of faith, where there is nothing else but the connection to God. That's why I really recommend eat the matzah and don't do anything else at that time. Just plug in because eating matzah is a means of plugging your entire self into that reservoir of godliness. You're, it's higher than anything we can imagine. So your physical body digests the amuna of your soul Everything is integrated back into one and your body and spirit are whole and harmonious. This wholeness is what we are here for at this Seder, to come into that wholeness with God. 
At the end of the meal, then we wash for bread. We eat this, I mean, watch for matzah. We eat this matzah. And then at the end of the meal, we retrieve the hidden matzah and eat from it, the half, the larger half that was hidden. And the only thing to eat or drink at the Seder after this afakoman is another two cups of wine. We don't eat any food after the afakoman. That is the taste we leave in our mouth and the wine that we leave that in our mouth. And that's it. We don't eat or drink anything more. That doesn't mean you can't, you know, rinse your mouth with water, but no more eating. This is it. It's the wine, it's the matzah, the afakoman matzah, and the two cups of wine. So with the first matzah, we fulfilled our obligation to eat matzah. This matzah, the afakoman, which was hidden is in place of the Pesach lamb, the Paschal lamb. In other words, what would happen here would be that we would eat the Paschal lamb. But we can only bring that to the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. And that's meant to be eaten on a full stomach. In other words, we've eaten the meal and now we're going to have the Afikoman. This is... very profound, like everything else in the Seder. In the Kabbalah, it's explained that there is something deeper than the soul. There's the body, then the spirit, and then there is the essence. So the essence is really God. And our the essence, essence, essence of our soul, the highest part of our soul is in God. So if the soul is light, then the essence is the source of light. If it is energy, then the essence is the dynamo. It is called safun. That's the part in our Haggadah. This, you say, safun, and that's when you're going to take out the afakomant and you're going to eat it. So what this is, is the essence that we are going to plug into with this matzah that is representing the Paschal Lamb. On Pesach, on Pesach night, we have that power to connect to essence. But that is only after all the steps before destroying our personal chametz, preparing our homes for liberation, and the 11 steps of the Seder until now. And then when we are satiated with all that we can handle, connecting every facet of ourselves to the divine, that's when that power comes to us. Whether we sense it or not, tasteless as it may seem, the matzah we eat now at the end of the Seder is reaching deeply into our core and transforms our very being. It brings us totally beyond our personal bounds. Here again, I completely recommend don't talk, don't get sidetracked, don't watch how other people are eating their matzah, just tune in and connect to essence. And it's beyond what we think of as ourselves. It's really our essential self. When we are taken out of Egypt, we become free people. Passover brings us a profound awareness of our freedom. The exodus from Egypt, which marked the end of Israel's subjugation to their Egyptian slaves, slavers and slavers, was the first step of the seven-week journey, a 49-step climb in the con conquest and transcendence of self. And that culminated in our receiving the Torah at Mount Sinai on the festival of Shavuot. So the process of taking in the matzah, the first matzah, hamotzi, we say hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz, but then we're taking in that matzah 
And that's the bread of faith. And then we're taking it in completely, 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 completely. And then we count day by day by day, starting the second night before the, first, the second Seder, if you have a second Seder. In other words, if you're not in Israel. Then we start to work on our character traits. And each day is different than another day. And you can listen to the Omer talk that will come on to YouTube, God willing. But what happens is we work on our, by doing this work, we are integrating the matzo. We're digesting the matzo. We're digesting the faith into who we are, into all of who we are. And then what happens is that we're changed, we're changed. And what and there, the result of that 49 step climb in, in the conquest and transcendence of self culminates in our receiving the torrent Mount Sinai, which is the festival of Shavuot. So at Sinai, we were granted the potential and challenge to attain yet a deeper dimension of liberty and self-transcendence. See, it's never over. God made us free. And the freedom that we have is to keep moving forward, to keep growing, to keep connecting to God and bringing that connection into our lives. So Shavuos is an outgrowth of Pesach. And that's where the significance of the Exodus comes to light only on the day we stood at Sinai. So God tells Moshe at the outset of his mission to liberate the Jewish people, this is your sign that I have sent you. When you take this nation out of Egypt, you shall serve God at this mountain. Standing before Pharaoh, Moshe did not just demand in the name of God, let my people go. But what he said was, let my people go that they may serve me, serve God. What, <clears throat> what's the significance of this liberating service? It means that a human, no matter how free of external constraints, is a finite creature subject to the limits of his own nature and character. To attain true freedom, each of us has to transcend our humanity, the emotional, intellectual, even spiritual self, and access the spark of godliness. And that is our infinite superhuman true self. So each of us, where are we coming from? We're coming from, well, we're getting rid of the chametz, so we're not coming from ego. We are moving to transcend. We nullify that chametz. Then we go to the Seder and we take in the bread of faith And we begin to integrate it. We are freed from slavery, out, physically out, freed from slavery, free from their power trip, free from them because they were at the Red Sea. They wanted to try again to be enslavers and God got rid of them. And then we go through the process of bringing that faith into who we are and of clarifying our own character traits so that we're not just unautomatic, but that we are really serving God. That was the point. Let my people go that they may serve me. What is it God wants? How can we connect to God? And when we do this, then we get true freedom, into emotional, intellectual, and spiritual freedom because we're connecting into the one God. Obviously, the Torah 
is teaching us how to do this work all the time, the work of transcending. And that is part of getting freedom on deeper and deeper levels and bringing that out into the world to be who we are meant to be and to do what we are meant to be doing. So we got that job, we got that mission at Sinai, and from there, we keep working it. So in our hummus free entering the Seder, we eat our humble matzah and rise above ego to connect to the essence of who we really are are. So may each and every one have a wonderful, kosher and freilich, joyful Pesach. And all this is in joy. It's profound, but it is joyful. So may each and every one be blessed.